In this episode of Connecting Pills, we'll analyze Beethoven's Egmont Overture. Hi, I'm Jamari Grillo, I'm a conductor and a composer, and welcome to this new episode of Connecting Pills, a series where we look into a classical piece or a part of it and outline its structure and phrasing, orchestration, and harmony, with a bonus technical tips. For conductors. I want to take a second to remind you that on my website you can find more than 70 videos now between score and technical analysis, the full episode of Conducting Pills, on top of the live sessions and plenty of other material. And now, let's begin! Between 1809 and 1810, Beethoven wrote a set of incidental music pieces to the 1787 play titled Egmont by Wolfgang Goethe. The first performance was given on June 15, 1810 in Vienna. The subject takes after the life of the 16th century nobleman Lamoral, Count of Egmont from the Low Countries, also known as the Habsburg Netherlands. The heroism of the character perfectly fitted Beethoven's political views as much as another character of a previous overture, Coriolan, which you can find right here. While the incidental music written by Beethoven sums up to 10 numbers, the overture remains the most popular one to this day. It's written in a strata form, a form typical of the classicism comprising an exposition with two contrasting themes, a development section where the music material gets reworked in various ways, and a recapitulation. Everything is often framed by a slow introduction and a coda. Look at the opening, expressing all the drama of the character and the situation. One note, F, spread across the orchestra. No other pitches are played, it's long, dramatic, in a forte dynamic. The diminuendo goes into a second bar, which is not less intense. Beethoven writes marcato underneath the strings, the only ones playing now. They are, again, very dramatic, in the low register, really heavy. The woodwinds take over, answering in piano, taming one another, oboe, clarinet, bassoons, followed by the strings. And the full orchestra comes back on the initial F, this time in fortissimo and without a diminuendo, moving on to the F minor chords in full orchestra instead of just the strings. After a short answer by the woodwinds, we enter the musical period that will lead us right into the allegro. Notice how the atmosphere is getting more nervous with the sense of anticipation. Violas and second violins provide the movement, the rhythmic motor. The violins and woodwinds dialogue on top, and underneath the cello spaces, bassoons and brass keep the heaviness of the situation with the saraband rhythm. Once we get to the allegro, the theme is not exposed right away. Four bars are left in the hands of the first violins in the octave with the cellos. They play against the natural accents of the bar. We move to a 3-4 meter, but the musical accents fall every two beats. This creates a sense of urgency and instability. And the theme follows the patterns and begins on a weak beat with a sforzando played by the cellos. The transition into the Allegro is the trickiest spot of the overture. Give a clear pulse on the first downbeat, let the players listen to each other and keep out of the way. Less is more. Now, while the violins and the woodwinds provide an answer, look at the cell in the cellos. It will shortly become essential. It appears first with an opposite motion in the violins and violas, and then it's used to build a huge crescendo towards the fortissimo. This music represents the fight between Count Egmont and the Spanish oppressors. The theme we heard from the cellos is now passed to the violins in octaves. The winds with the double basses keep the harmony, while the cellos and violas roar in their lowest register. And notice the timpani part in triplets, which, against the duplets of the cellos and violas, add even more tension. Cleverly, Beethoven recalls an element we've already heard in the introduction, in the relative major key now.
This is not our usual feminine second theme as we heard for instance in Coriolan. The woodwinds gently answer but the strings reiterate the fortissimo right after. We're still in battle with moves and counter moves slash surprise attacks. As a matter of fact, the surprise continues with those rhythms coming in at the wrong, so to speak, time, again on the weak third beat of the bar. And that is how Beethoven just keeps going with alternating piano and dolce phrases with forte and powerful answers. There's no time to rest, no time to relax. As soon as we try to, he wakes us up with a slap in the face. The development section is really short. We have barely enough time to hear the first theme and the rhythmical cell overlapping in the key of C minor. That those four bars played by the violins at the beginning of the Allegro return and modulate back to F minor and to the recapitulation. Except that normally the exposition of a movement in a minor key in sonata form ends on its relative major while the recapitulation ends on the minor key. But Beethoven has more surprises waiting for us. We end up, in fact, on a D flat major. That is the use of the same material to create one more transition. Look at the violins in bar 278. They are only playing forte, not fortissimo anymore, and the G is an eighth note, like a conversation that's being all of a sudden cut off. Silence follows. Beethoven is anticipating the beheading of Count Egmont. As he noted in his sketches, death can be expressed by silence. We end up in the coda, a glorious fanfare in honor of the hero. The pianissimo dynamic turns into a crescendo that swiftly takes us to the full force of the orchestra. The fiery battle ends with a final call from the trumpets and the typically military rhythm. Thank you for watching, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel by clicking on the subscribe button right below the video and ring the bell so you will get notified every time a new video comes out. For more score analysis and if you're interested in conducting a conducting technique, do check out my website and my Facebook group. All the links are in the description. Let me know in the comments what you think about this piece and if you have any suggestions for future videos and I look forward to seeing you next week with a new episode of Conducting Pills when we will go through Puccini's Intermezzo of Manon Lescaut. In the meanwhile, please continue to enjoy music and be well. Ciao! Make sure you follow it and do not conduct at chest or eye level. You would miss out on the weight that the music requires. Pulse on the third. All that's really needed here is the first downbeat. After that, keep it.